What's up, Kim peeps? Why so salty? In this vid, we're gonna explain how salts can affect the pH of a system. Breaking it down. Specifically, we're gonna explain how to calculate the pH of a salt solution. All right, to solve for the pH of a salt solution, we must first identify the ion of the salt that is acting as a weak acid or weak base. So you wanna go back and think about that vid that we just discussed, which ion is gonna hydrolyze water and create additional hydrogen ion or additional hydroxide ion. And then once you've identified the ion that acts as a weak acid or a weak base, you can simply determine the pH exactly like you would a weak acid or a weak base. Keep in mind the following five things. One, if the ion is acting as a weak acid, just write the reaction of that ion with water, set up an ice table, and use the Ka expression. If the ion is acting as a weak base, write the reaction of the ion with water, set up an ice table, and use the Kb expression. Keep in mind your expressions for Ka and Kb, and recognize that many times we're able to do the x's small approximation to make the math a lot easier. Then, once you've used your ice table and that Ka or Kb expression, just remember your formulas for pH or pOH. And then finally, remember this important relationship between Ka and Kb, because commonly you'll be given information about the Ka for a weak acid, but the ion that you'll be working with in your salt solution is acting as a weak base. And so one times 10 to the minus 14 equals Ka times Kb is an important one, and one that'll get you out of many of those trick questions that the college board will like to throw at you. Okay, so let's take a look at that example problem that you've got in your notes. We're asked to determine the pH of a 0.100 molar sodium formate solution. We're told the Ka of formic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus four. Okay, so the first thing I want you to think about is the neutralization reaction that resulted in the formation of that salt sodium formate. And then think about the ions that make up our salt. We've got the sodium ion and the formate ion. And we're trying to decide which of these ions, if any, is going to affect the pH of our salt solution. Let's start with our cation, the sodium ion. Will the sodium ion hydrolyze or split water? If it does, it would form sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. Remember, strong bases aren't gonna form. They're not gonna come together. They like to stay ionized, separated. This is not gonna happen. The sodium ion is not gonna hydrolyze water. And so it's not gonna affect the pH of our salt solution. The formate ion, on the other hand, it will hydrolyze water, it will split water. And because it's an anion, it's gonna hook up with the hydrogen ion to form formic acid and additional hydroxide ion. And this is gonna happen because formic acid is a weak acid. And those things, remember, do stay together. They don't tend to ionize. So the first thing you wanna do when you're given a question like this is look at the ions in your salt and identify which of the ions is gonna act as a weak acid or weak base. In this case, it's the formate ion that's gonna act as a weak base because it's gonna split water and form additional hydroxide ions. All right, so let's work it through. First thing we wanna do, after we've decided which ion is going to act as a weak acid or weak base, is write the reaction for that ion with water. The formate ion is gonna split water to form formic acid and additional hydroxide ion. We're told the initial concentration of the formate ion is 0.100 molar. And initially we have no formic acid or hydroxide ion. The change in concentration, we're gonna determine stoichiometrically all one to one. And then at equilibrium, we're gonna combine our initial and changes to come up with the concentrations at equilibrium. Now the first thing to do is recognize that the formate ion is acting as a weak base. It's creating additional hydroxide ion. And we're given Ka of formic acid. So the first thing we need to do is take our expression for Kw and solve it for Kb. Now, we need to remember that we can rearrange the equation to solve for Kb, and keep in mind that the value for Kw is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Simply dividing that by our Ka value, 1.8 times 10 to the minus four, will give us our value for Kb, which is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. Again, this is a common trick. You'll feel really good about setting up your ice table, and then you'll use this value of Ka instead of Kb. And you need to recognize that you need a Kb value because this is acting as a weak base. It's forming additional hydroxide ion. Now that we have our value for Kb, let's write our Kb expression for this equation. Bam, 
always write this out in terms of the species that you have in the equation first. Then we're going to plug in our KB value that we just solved for and plug in the equilibrium concentrations. We're going to make the X's small approximation and we can do that because the value of our initial concentration and our KB differ by a factor of a thousand or more. So that simplifies our expression to 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11 is equal to x squared over 0.1. A quick jump to our calculator, we'll get x to equal 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. And then once we know the hydroxide ion concentration, we can plug that into the formula for pOH and solve for the pOH of this solution, which is 5.63. And then finally recognize that we want the pH. So keep in mind that relationship between pH and pOH and then simply plug in your pOH value, subtract, and solve for pH. So our final answer here, 8.37. As always, take a moment at the end to stop and think about whether or not your answer makes sense. Our salt, sodium formate, is coming from a strong base and a weak acid. So we've decided that it's a basic salt. The solution is gonna have a slightly basic pH because the formate ion of that salt is gonna split or hydrolyze water and form additional hydroxide ion. So it makes sense that our pH is slightly basic, 8.37. We are done.